Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to Let's Try Farming Simulator 19. This is the latest iteration of a very long running game franchise. And it really is, if you want to feel like you are a farmer, which I know doesn't sound like the most exciting thing in the world, but turns out to be pretty fun actually once you're into it, there's really no other solid choice. Um, the depth in this game is amazing, and Farming Simulator in particular, or 19, Farming Simulator 19 in particular, really ups the ante in terms of visuals as well as all kinds of different gaming elements. Um, it's really impressive. It is. It feels like a completely brand new game that is just wonderful. One of the things, and I mean it is a brand new game, Farming Simulator 19, as opposed to 17, and I'm playing on a pre-release version at this point, which means the mod screen is empty, and this makes me so sad, because one of the things with simulator games like this, any hardcore simulation game, is people, the community is really, really always um, very enthusiastic and dedicated to the game. And there's a million mods that exist for Farming Simulator, or at least Farming Simulator 17, which is the most recent one, for example. Um, I'm, I'm convinced once the game is released, a lot of these are going to be ported forward to this because um, some things should probably be able to port forward fairly easily. Maps might need a little bit more work because some of the map mechanics work a fair bit differently in this one here. Um, and, and some of the gameplay mods and things like that, but it really is like a, a rich, rich source of things. That being said, even though Farming Simulator 19 is currently modless, uh, I can't see myself going back and playing an earlier version because this game... They've really done some wonderful things to it. Let's go ahead and hop into a career over here and get started and we'll talk about that. So first thing that's changed in the game is your sort of difficulty setting over here. Well, that's his career mode instead of difficulty setting. And it's sort of still kind of easy, medium, hard, but not exactly. Um, with the new farmer option over here, you would get to start already owning land and some equipment. And in particular, if you start in Ravenport, which is one of the two maps that ship with FM9 or FS19, um, then it'll also uh, offer you a tutorial, which you can then skip regardless. So this gets you started with some gear. Farm Manager starts you off with no land, no buildings, no equipment, but you do start with um, one and a quarter million dollars or euros or pound, whatever currency symbol you decide to use. And then start from scratch here is the same as Farm Manager, except you don't start with a million pounds worth of money. Instead, you have to really build yourself up from a very tiny amount, maybe take a bunch of the contract jobs to build up your initial amount. I'm gonna start with the Farm Manager mode here because it'll really show off a lot of the changes in the game um, as we go forward. So two maps do ship with FS19. There's Ravenport, uh, American map. I think, I think it's in Pennsylvania. Had some notes about that. I'm pretty sure that's the case. And there's also Felsbrunn over here, which I believe is in Germany. It's got a castle on the map. And um, I gotta say though, I think the Ravensport map is or Ravenport is is really really nice. It has it has two things going against it. It doesn't actually have a castle, and your starting area kind of has a little bit of a junkyard in it, which is a little unfortunate. But um, we're gonna go ahead and start with this because it is the default, and that's gonna be fine. You do get a few more options for characters instead of just picking a male or female. There's four different characters for um, each gender over here. Um, and there's uh, a handful of extra hairstyles as well that you can shake up. You can put on a hat. It's always going to be a baseball cap, but you've got like a trillion logos to choose from. Look, C's, D's, E's, like you just go through alphabetically. There's a bunch of different options. We're going to go ahead and be hatless. And there it is. Um, whether you have a vest or not, and whether you have some sunglasses or not, and you can pick your base shirt color. It more or less is probably only a matter a bunch if you do multiplayer, which of course is built into the game. And I'm very eager to announce that if all goes well, starting next week, there should be multiplayer uh, Farming Simulator 19 with A Kiss for Luck and Barstone, the same people I did um, uh, Stardew Valley with. We're gonna be taking the farming up to the next notch. I've been very excited to do this for a while, and I think it's gonna, it's gonna be a go. Um, and mostly because of two major new factors in Farming Simulator 19 here. One is the built-in um, horse riding and the dogs as well, which are really cool. And uh, just more variety of crops, as well as a real sort of build your own farm kind of aspect of the game. I gotta say, there's, there's a whole different sort of um, aesthetic and dynamic going on with the game, just with where you spawn on this map, for example. They want kind of a nice, beautiful view to start off with. We've got that old, I don't know, mission or, or something on top there. We've got the windmill here. We've got lots of little pretty flowers right when you spawn in. And I think, you know, it tells you a little something about with, with the game. I think they really want to up 
the sort of visual ante. Certainly the game visually looks a lot better than previous versions right out of the box. Um, you know, with enough modding, that you could make FS17 really, really breathtaking and gorgeous. But 19, pretty sexy right out of the box here, which is nice. Okay. So we're going to try to keep the pace going on here uh, for this little let's try and talk about some of the major new changes. So one thing is, unless you start on the, um, the, the, the beginner friendly farm, you do start with no territory whatsoever. You don't have a field, you don't have anything going on. And the first thing when I came into the game, I was a little confused about of how do I buy a field? For example, there is a field over here. Uh, how do I purchase this? Well, Normally, in previous versions, you'd look near the field, there'd be a little floating symbol, you'd walk up to it and you'd click buy. That is not the case here. And the reason for that is you don't buy fields anymore in, in version 19 of Farming Simulator. Instead, you buy sort of plots of land which are a little bit different than just buying a field. So if we hit escape to bring up the, uh, the main screen here, we'll, we'll look at you know these various little info panels um, as we go forward. If we bring up the map, so this is, this is Ravenport over here. Um, it's nice. It's got a railway that goes around here, and, and you can uh, you can drive the train as well if you want. Uh, we've got a few very large fields and a bunch of really small ones as well. We're gonna start over here. That's where we spawn. Uh, we got three little fields, and you know what? I think that's a great place to start off with because plowing large fields, while financially very profitable, does take a long time to get you started. So. We'll focus over here. And one of the things you've got is this little lands button here. Uh, and whether you play on PC or on console, or if you play on PC with an Xbox controller, for example, these will auto map. If I had my controller plugged in, as soon as I hit anything on the controller, um, all the little, um, all the little like, keyboard things on the screen would change immediately to tell you what the new key binds are, which is kind of cool. If we click on this, we get a slightly different view of the map. We don't longer have the, the place to filter various crops and things like that. But what happens if I click on a plot of land like this, this is a plot of land that I can purchase right over here. So this would cost $362,000, which I have enough money for, and it would have three fields in it, plus a little bit of extra territory, um, you know, both some flat land here, a little bit of hills with some trees and things like that. There's a few other options. Oh, this one's really cheap. I guess it's only got one field, although it's fairly large and it's got some room to develop, which is interesting. So some of these are single fields. Sometimes you get a group of them like this. The here over here, it's like a ginormous, amazing field. Would cost 1.2 million to get started. I have no money left over. Um, but I could always raise some extra funds by doing contracts, for example, over here. So people offer different amounts of money for different jobs. The the money tends to scale with the size of the, the, the area you're going to have to work. You can use your own equipment or you can lease their built-in equipment here, which will be the correct equipment, which is very handy. And it just lowers your, your reward from doing those things. So if you start in the hardest core mode, you can raise money by doing that. Or if you find yourself a little bit broke, or you just need to kill some time while you wait for your crops to grow, you've got these contracts in here. And the contracts have been in the previous iterations of Farming Simulator, but I, I don't think it's been quite as sort of nice and friendly and easy to get to over here. I, I, I might be mistaken, I don't know. Anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll buy uh, oh, lands mode. We'll buy this plot of land over here and done. So now this is our land. These fields, if we go back to normal map overview, these fields have green numbers, which show ownership at this point. And we can check the crops that are there. And yeah, now I think the state of these crops, I think might be randomized because when last time I loaded in here, I'm pretty sure this sunflower patch was basically ready to be harvested. So right now it's growing. It says needs plow. Needs plowing is just means for the next harvest. We're going to have to plow it um, and rather than just cultivate it just to get the maximum fertility. Although the, the fact that it says needs plowing now may mean, excuse me, I've got hiccups um, that we don't have maximum fertility for this. So we're not going to get the biggest yield of sunflowers, but it's still okay. Um, fertilize is zero. Weed is zero percent. So that might be some things that we want to look at as well. So we got a field over here, which is currently growing uh, canola. This one is at least fertilized. So that's good. And then over here, we've got a field growing. Uh, what is it? Cotton. Excellent. There are some new crops built into the game. Um, how do we see the names of these crops? Because I don't remember just buy pictures, but there, there's a lot of different things that we can sell um, more than in previous versions, which is kind of nice. There's also a lot more livestock than before. Now it used to be on one of these screens, you would get your livestock breakdown, even if you didn't have any yet. Um, and, and so you could see the list of like pigs, sheep, chickens. Now we've got also horses um, and you can get a dog. Now a dog doesn't count as livestock, but let's go and look at that. So in addition to the different way of buying land, 
the way that you build up your farm is very different. Like normally you would start with a farm. You'd have like a farmhouse, you'd have some sheds, you'd have silos to store your goods. And we've got, we've got none of that over here. So how do we get that? Well, if we hit P to go into our shopping screen, uh, and by the way, these are all the brands of vehicles and things like that that are available in the game. So you can just look at things from this point of view. Like for example, if we find uh, say John Deere, so we can see all the John Deere tractors, harvesters, and other equipment. You know, if you want everything to have that same John Deere green look, then maybe you just buy, buy a brand. Or maybe you go to the vehicle thing, small, medium, large tractors, trucks, harvesters, da da da. So if we go medium tractors, a bunch of different tractors that you can buy. This game is ridiculous. It's, it's, really, it's really nuts how much stuff is in here. Uh, yeah, sugar canes, which I think was part of, um, was it an expansion to FS17? that added a South American map and sugarcane harvest. Anyway, that's built in. Um, beets, mm, beets. Tools, we got a million different tools. It's just it's just ludicrous. Okay, then we're, we're gonna go over here. Well, okay, this is objects as well, like um, feed bags and things like that. And then there's placeables. So placeables were in the game before, but weren't really to the same extent important. Here they're critical because we literally start with nothing. Now the thing is, technically, um, other than the animal pens, I think you don't technically need any placeables. Like you don't need a farmhouse. Um, you don't even need a shed because like weather and maintenance, I don't think is simulated. Um, miscellaneous, you've got your cleaning equipment here, the vehicle workshop. So some of these are handy. Uh, logs that could convert into wood chips um, and then instantly sold, water stations. So some of these are like are convenient to have around. Um, but yeah, one of the big things, like you can you can make your own farm and, and add as much characteristic as you want. An old barn, a uh, little sandcastle that's interesting, and the mod ability. I mean, placeables were always something you could already mod in, but there's going to be more emphasis in building your own farm here, which is quite cool. Uh, so let's go to the animal pens, though. And the very first animal pen we're going to look like look at is the doghouse. And here is the placement mode. We sort of zoom out of where we are, and we can go and pick and place things wherever you want. We can rotate things around. If you want things to be nicely organized, you can hold the C key for grid snap snapping, which looks a little weird with the doghouse, but is really useful when you've got a bunch of bigger buildings. Then you can make sure to snap them so that they're all orderly. The snapping, if you hold the snapping key, it also changes the rotation to be on fixed angles as well. So you can have nice uh, square corners. Let's go and put the doghouse, uh, maybe, you know, just by this tree over here. Just, just like that. I like it. Excellent. So we've got a little doghouse. Uh, only one item allowed per farm. Aw, can't have a second doghouse. Really? But what if we want a friend? So we're going to go over here and check out our puppy. Oh, hello. Hey, puppy. Hello. Let me pet you. Oh, good doggy. Good doggy. Here, come. Come. Come on, dog. Yeah. And then he goes, he'll run around with you. How wonderful is that? Um, you can feed him. There's also a ball. Wonder, can we get him to play with the ball? Can we pick it up? You want the dog? You want the ball? You want the ball? Throw. Yeah, okay, this is, this is about the same as my own dog. I said go home. How do we... I wonder. I mean, they, they put this in here for a reason. Come on, dog. Go! All right. You're no fun. You're broken. We'll leave you there. Let's go look at horses, which are new. So, to get horses, we're going to need an animal pen. So, we're going to go into the placement mode. We're going to go to animal pens over here. So, we got our chicken coops. A couple of sizes, cow pastures, a couple of sizes, horse paddocks, a couple of sizes, um, pigs, and sheep over here. So we're going to grab the smaller horse paddock over here. And it's still fairly large. needs a lot of space. Hopefully, okay, good. We don't have to buy more territory to get this in here. Now, this might not be where we're going to want it in a real farm, but we're just checking out the other uh, features here. So if I go and pop out of this and go over to the horse paddock, oh, how lovely is this? And I believe in previous versions, you could usually buy buy animals from this okay i don't see a oh we got an open gate that's cool um we may not be able to buy the animals from from here okay that's fine because what we can do is we can go to our map here and we can click so we can visit the horse paddock that way. That's handy. Right over here, the animal dealer. We're going to go and teleport to the animal dealer, then hit R to open up the um, the list of animals we can buy. So this is going to be filtered based on what we actually have capacity for. And things like you've got like pigs of different colors and things and the horses of different colors. Uh, I'm going to get uh, I'm going to get this bay. I think he's just lovely. 
black, seal brown, done. Oh, these are all really nice. We'll get the bay though. Um, so we'll go and do this. We don't have our own animal trailer, so we will have to pay the premium transportation fee. That's okay. We'll get you going on there. And then if we open up here and we go back there, we can just teleport over here. Some people play and they're like, well, I won't teleport ever, but for our purposes, we'll definitely do that. So we got ourselves a horse in here. Oh, Sparky. Sparky is his name's horse, or this horse's name. <laughs> I'm gonna look at the livestock thing. Here's Sparky, daily riding, 0%. Horse's value is determined by its fitness, health, and cleanliness. They should be ridden every day to increase, increase their fitness. Horses require straw for clean bedding and water and food to stay healthy. Periodically, they need to be brushed and clean. Feed them a mix of the following foods. For best results, provide all these types. So, oat and hay. So if we can get both of those together, they'll get 100% food amounts. There you go. So Sparky, come on, man. Let's go for a ride. And there we go. So we can uh, just set you up to a walk. Nice. We can bring you up to a trot. And actually, it's, it's kind of nice when you're turning like this. Like, this is a really... It's actually quite a nice little horse animation. Real horse skill going on here. We can't quite go into dressage, but it's pretty good. Okay, there's, um, there's that. Let's go up to a canter, which is always seemed to me like a really odd little gait for the horse is oops <laughs> being of the gate I sort of missed the gate there physics so it's, it's, a, it's a little micro hop a little micro hop this little canter oh you can see the plants get, get smushed uh once you get up to a canter you can start uh jumping your horse the animation's a little funky but there you go and we can go up to a full gallop here yeah yeah go 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 and i do have the game volume set really low which is too bad um because you might, might not be able to hear like the hoof beats and things but Excellent. We can actually jump fences at this speed. So turning's a little, you know, it's a wide turning radius at this speed, but that, that's okay. Um, if we go and bring you to a stop, just check over here. There we go. 20% daily riding. All right. So, I mean, you've, you've got to exercise them a fair bit, but it looks nice. Like if we bring it down to a, like, especially a walk, right? And we just, just meander over here. How nice is this? Just everything looks so lovely. Oh, just absolutely gorgeous. I don't know. It, it is nice. It is nice. And so there's there's different things for different people. Like if you're sort of a just more of an old school uh, farming simulator player and you don't necessarily care about the horse stuff, well, that's fine. You don't have to. Um, you know, you can stick to your your raising cr your crops, or uh, or maybe you know you could do you could do your regular livestock. That that's all fine. Um, but I think having this feature is going to bring new people into the genre. Um, hop! Hey, not too bad. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Good, good, good boy, Sparky. Excellent. Horse Sparky is back in the stable. I wonder, hold on, can I, if I ride you out of here, I think you stay where you are. Let's try to do this gate without the clipping into it. Oh, a little bit of clip. All right, come over here. If I stop you here, for example, and then get out. Yeah, yeah, you stay where you are. Excellent. Oh, you don't have a, a saddle on when you're out here. I guess we just carry it with us. That's fine. Oh, this turn's pretty good, man. Awesome. What about, so right on the outside, part of this grass is part of the paddock? I'm just curious, if I let you go here? Oh, you're still there. Okay. Wasn't sure how, how that would work. All right, go home, Sparky. Anyway, yeah, so, I mean, anything that brings more people into more types of games tends to be good. Is that your cleanliness? I think so. Or is that food? I'm not sure, but we don't have any food for you right now. No water, no straw, no oats, no hay. Poor old Sparky's going to have a real bad time unless I get some things delivered here. Um, yeah, how long has this video gone on? Okay, let, we've, got, we've got time to take a look at this. Uh, so, we are going to go and probably just teleport down... Um, Pallets, fertilizer, yeah, so it's not pallets that I'm looking for. Okay, just wanted to double check that. It's going to be here. We've got the hay bales as well, right? This is just uh, wheat, hay, silage. Here, let's get a couple hay bales. Oh, it's at the store. So we'll have to bring this back with us. Okay. So we'll need something in it. Um, let's, let's teleport to the store and actually consider how we might want to get it there. So the shop should be here. So we look around. Okay, there's our hay bales. How are we going to bring this home? Object too heavy. Yes, yeah, so I can't just pick it up and lift it by myself. Well, we've got, we've got some options. We've got quite a few different options for, for this. 
Um, I wonder if we just get a... Uh, so there's a wheel loader, but there's... There's these bad boys, too. And of course, you can just put an attachment on the front of your tractors. Uh, front loaders. Chainsaw. Forestry equipment. Front loaders. Skid steer loaders. Yeah. See, there's... Mm. Hmm. There's a lot of options. You could just have these loaders for a tractor, or you could buy a dedicated piece of machinery to do this sort of thing. So wheel loader ready to go. You know what? I think we'll get this little mana too. Excellent. No customization for the wheels. Uh, oops. Um, that's actually something I'd wanted to show off. If we go over here and we look at, say, a tractor, say this John Deere over here, we've got different wheel setups. So weighted back wheels, uh, wide tires, twin tires front and back. Like, holy cow. You know, so you get more traction, you don't sink in. Some of them have thin tire widths as well. So a lot of options for customization, different engines. Sometimes you can have different colors. There's all kinds of stuff. Let's just get this Manitou. I will purchase you. This is a really dumb purchase, I think. But you know what? Let's give it a go. Little guy. I love it. Uh, let's enter this. And then the question is, are you going to be able to lift this? I actually don't 100% know. But that's fine. Let's do our best backing up here, which I'm terrible at all the time. Okay, that's as low to the ground as possible. That's good. How do we... Hold on. There's no controls for the lift? Maybe it happens kind of automatically. I'm trying to center up here. Straighten out the wheels. Okay. Okay. 400, yeah. Oh! There it is. With the tilt. There we go, and up. So hold the left mouse button, and then you can tilt and do this. Um, the problem with this is this load isn't super secured. If I... Yeah, this is the wrong tool to drive this all the way home. And the smoke effect's a little wonky with this graphic. If I suddenly stop... Yeah, okay, alright. It's it's not going to go haywire, so that's good. Throw the cruise control on. But this is this would be a, a hell of a hard job to bring home. And that's hay. I think what might be easiest, to be honest, is... Oh! Almost got it off there. Is if I just brought like a flatbed truck, we could still do this. Like, I'm tempted. What if I just left the Manitou over here to a certain extent? Okay, come here. And purchase, like, maybe literally just a pickup truck. I wonder if I could load things into the back. I don't actually know 100% here. 1978 pickup truck. Done. Can I? This isn't exactly what I thought. I thought, you know, just a flatbed trailer and then get your, your tractor to, to haul that. Any chance? Can we put down... I don't know if you can put down the uh, unfold car. There he is. Excellent. Okay. That's something. Uh, just to make my life a little easier. Let me pull you up over here. Okay, if they weren't stacked, I might be able to grab one hay bale at a time. I'm not sure. Oh, is this going to be too wide? Yep. Hmm. It looks like we might be high enough, though, to load from the side. You'd have to be high to do what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry, the uh, the bulk of the video is basically done now. If you don't want to watch this, I totally understand, and you can go, Oh my god, these these back steering wheels really screw me up. It's okay, we can, we can just steer from here. Or not. No, oh, man. And they, they don't auto-straighten. Might have to get myself a real steering rig here. I mean, they do a little... Oh, no, no, we can't do this. Uh, maybe we can. Now, if I go and try to tip you forward and then back up and then just flip the entire truck over. Yeah, get off. Get off. Get off. Get off. Physics! Sure! I'm going to call that a success. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll strap you down. You know, for safety. Yeah, object too heavy. 
Um, this this is a totally secured load, guys. I don't know what you're t you're complaining about. This is this is perfectly fine and normal. Okay, bring it home the hay. <laughs> so um, we're gonna wrap this up here. I fold this up. Yeah, it's gonna clip through. So let's not do that. Oh my god, this this thing can motor. 75 miles an hour is the crude speed. Woohoo! And this is the thing is this is not. Oh my god, an arcadey driving game where like 75 still feels slow. 75 feels really fast in this game um, for a few different reasons. I do have it set to miles an hour and things because of um, playing in, on the US map. So you can have you can go with kilometers or miles, you can go with acres or hectares, and you can choose your currency symbol. Um, as far as I know, I don't think any of the numbers change. I think so this cruise control is set to 75 here, and I think it would still be set to 75. It would just, instead of MPH, it would just say KPH literally i think makes no difference for that i think the, the the acres and hectares might be something i don't know uh right so hey so how do i dump this off i don't know here we'll just kill some some random plants here so we've got these little spots no maybe not this one there's a few different drop off spots and actually i don't even know if i can drop it off the drive oh there we go Hey, sweet, good. Oh, okay, so there's a drop-off spot for that and that, and then for water we'd need something that can get to haul water, and somewhere where you can load water. But hey, at least we've got a little something going on. You now have some hay for food, good. Um, yeah, and you'll need straw and oats, ideally. I mean, hay means you can at least survive. You do need straw to keep up your condition and some water as well. Well, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to leave that be for another time go do this and close that up excellent i mean i knew this wasn't going to be the, the the greatest way to move those bales i just wanted to see if we could and the answer is we totally can which is awesome and i'm really looking forward to this, playing this multiplayer um with people in particular like doing things like you know having someone working the this sort of harvester and someone else uh driving alongside with um with uh like a, a trailer to collect the stuff out of the pipe that well, sounds good. I'm gonna go and raise you up a little, so I can just spear you. Oh my god, the steering wheel thing is annoying. Because if I spear you somewhat in the middle, like that, there we go, and then raise you up, this feels a little safer. Okay, driving with. Oh no 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 no! Oh, come on, come on, get back on here, get. I should really, this would be easier with the controller, because the problem is left and right on the mouse is what's used to tilt, and it's easy to do that accidentally. There we go, do that, and then raise you up, just a little like that, there we go, and we'll bring you home like this. What's my maximum speed? 15? Ooh, it's going to be a lot slower. But still, I have, I like having this little, this little bad boy around the farm to do some work for me. And yeah, the smoke effect shader is a little bit odd. I think that's something with one of my like video card settings on my actual computer, though. I noticed like um, some of the transparency issues don't quite transparency right um, it, across a variety of different games. So I think that might be something on my own computer that's not quite tuned correctly. I'll have to go into my uh, my NVIDIA control panel and see what the situation is. Oh, cash machine there by the restaurant. Look how cute this town is. It's just, it's totes adorbs. I think. I think this is by far the prettiest default map they've put in. Like, the amount of just greenery and everything. I like it more um, than the old default map, which used to feel, like, very open, um, which was easy to navigate, but felt very barren. This one feels like there's a lot of life going on here. You know, a little house under construction and everything. And I think just a lot more detail has been put in, which is good. Especially in the area, you know, that I'm, I'm operating in this little corner, right? In the bottom right, right corner. You know, it's a nice small little town. If you go and you went into this middle area where they have those giant fields, like Field 8 and whatever, I'm sure that's going to feel incredibly wide open. Oh my god, this is so much slower. <laughs> but, you know, safer too. And hey, at least now I can actually see out the front for a change, which is good. We got the ye old spinnery over here, which where we can drop off wool and things, right? The cozy wool, traditional spinnery. Sounds nice. Since 16... No, 18... 86. Wow. 
It's one of the differences playing on a North American map as opposed to a European map. Uh, what is considered, you know, really old is is a fair bit different. Oh my god, I don't exist. I can't see myself. There's no straps on here. It'd be nice to have straps to help secure the load. I also just want to push all the buttons. I want to play this in VR. If you do have a, a some sort of head tracking tool or eye tracking tool, it does work in here. Um, there's a bunch of different options for that. And it's kind of nice to just be able to sort of... It, 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 it's one of these things that all, it doesn't sound like it should work, and yet it does. And you sort of glance slightly to the right, or move your head slightly to the right, depending on which technology you're using. And the view moves, and it actually feels supernatural. It, like, very natural. Not supernatural. Although, to a certain extent, it seems a little bit like magic. Um, and and it, is, it is really, really, really impressive um, how well it works to make you feel... Without using a full VR he headset, but still, like, you have the ability to sort of glance around very freely. Kind of nice. Makes for not-so-great videos, generally speaking, because it tracks it in a way that's a little bit weird for, uh, for other people to watch sometimes. But, yeah. Anyway, I made it slowly but surely all the way back over here. And because we're not using any sort of weather mod or anything like that, or seasons mod, I don't think I actually have to worry about whether I store this indoors or outdoors. Uh, I'm just wondering if I can drop off more hay here. It's full, so I'm willing to bet. Yeah, nothing happens. So, what I'll probably do is just do something like um, drop this here. So click, down, pull back. Oh! Maybe it did get consumed. It just didn't get pulled in automatically. Yeah, okay. Well, that's fine. I was just going to leave it next door and then park the mana to. But that's going to be okay. Uh, I didn't buy a shed or anything. I probably should, but let's just go and park... Right over here, drop the forks down, excellent, and done. There you go. Hey, Sparky, how's it going, man? I'll be back to ride you some more. Anyway, that's the end of this little Let's Try. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't look at, like, the standard farming simulator stuff, which is, you know, working all the fields and doing all that kind of stuff, but um, trying to focus on mostly new features. I'm really impressed by uh, Farming Simulator 19. I'm really looking forward to the multiplayer series that will hopefully start next week and give us a chance to uh, really dig into the farming, and in particular, doing it as a group, I think, is going to be really enjoyable. You know, everyone's going to have little different tasks to take care of. Unfortunately for Briarstone, there's no fishing, but I'm sure he's going to be... He's going to find lots to do, probably lots of things that are very destructive to do, in fact, is what I fully expect from him. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, other than that, thank you very much, folks, and I will see you guys next time.